1 Corinthians chapter number 10. We're going to read several verses. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Ghost, penned down these words. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. He's talking about when God parted the Red Sea. And all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things uh, as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happened unto them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore? Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the update on the video. The kids, thank you, Lord, for allowing them to go to camp. And, Lord, the help they got. Thank you for our dear brother, Brother Sammy. Thank you for sparing St. Lucia from a lot of the harm of the hurricane. But, God, I pray for those other islands that were hit hard. I pray for Brother Mitchell and, Lord, uh, their church building, that, Lord, you'd uh, get supplies to them so they can get it rebuilt, so they can further uh, do further work in getting the gospel out in that community. I pray for those uh, areas where folks are struggling to have anything to eat and struggling, uh, Lord, just to survive. And, Lord, more storms may be in the horizon. And, God, I just pray that, Lord, in your providence... Uh, You'd do a work where many folks would come to Christ. Uh, Lord, I certainly do pray that you'd meet every need of every heart. Bless those that are working with the teens on the other side. Uh, and God, certainly sit down amongst us and help us from the Word of God. Uh, Father, thank you for being so good to us. Uh, Lord, we do owe you everything, and we bless uh, your sweet name. Thank you, Lord, for uh, uh, all your choice blessings, and that daily you loadeth us with benefits. Uh, speak to hearts now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless you for it, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we ask it all. Amen. Uh, and amen. Uh, notice in this text, in these 12 verses, uh, you can divide it up into three sections. Uh, can I say, uh, uh, notice the precedent. Uh, we find that in verses 1 through 6, uh, uh, the Apostle Paul is writing uh, about the precedent or the example uh, that was set before them uh, with the children of Israel. Uh, how God delivered them out of Egypt. Uh, how God parted the Red Sea. Uh, how God sent them manna from heaven. Uh, how God opened up the rock uh, and uh, gave them water to drink. Uh, how God uh, 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 turned bitter waters into sweet at Marah. How God once again blessed and moved. Uh, how God sent them quail. Uh, how God took care of them in the wilderness. Uh, yet they murmured. Uh, yet they complained. Uh, yet they turned their back on God. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, that was given as our example uh, that you and I, who God has redeemed from the hand of the enemy, uh, who God sustained us and blessed us and clothed us uh, and taken good care of us, uh, we need to remember how they acted uh, and we need to far, far, far turn from the way they went uh, and turn unto God. Uh, 
uh, uh, the Lord gave me this little thought. I wrote it down. Uh, 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 in verses 1 through 6, it talks about uh, they were all baptized in verse number 2. Uh, verse 3, they all ate the same spiritual meat. Verse 4, they all drank the same spiritual drink. Uh, you find over and over, all, 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 all of them. Uh, and some estimate as many as 6 to 10 million Jews uh, were delivered at that time. And God sustained them all. But this is the thought the Lord gave me on that. They all had the same opportunity, but they did not all end up with the same outcome. Can I say, you can be as spiritual as you want to be. God is no respecter of persons. God gives us all the same choices, the same opportunities, the same blessings, the same benefits. Whether or not you receive, it's up to you. God sets forth a table in our wilderness right here on this church house. Now you can choose to pull up underneath the table and eat or you can leave out starved spiritually. It's up to you. Huh? It's not God's fault. Huh? God gives us all the same opportunity. But I fear even in our church we won't all have the same outcome. Hmm? We see the precedent or the example. Then notice the pattern or the insample. Most people want to uh, uh, lump example and in, in, in sample together. If they're the same, why did God use two different words? Matter of fact, if you get the old 1828 and old Webster dictionary, they'll tell you in samples not used very often. But God thought it important to use it. Can I say that mm, example is a pattern? In sample, or example is a precedent, a copy, uh, uh, something that to look at. But in example is a pattern. Don't walk down that uh, 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 way. Now look what he said that they did. Look at verse 7. Uh, he said, Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. As are written, the people sat, da sat down to eat, to eat and drink and rose up to play. And I preached on that many times out of Exodus 33. And can I say, a lot of folks uh, 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 come to the house of God on Sunday, but then they raise, rise up to play all week long. They, they're playing with the things of God, huh? Uh, we say we love Jesus on Sunday, but we're serving other gods the rest of the week, huh? Or I, 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 neither be idolaters. Uh, verse 8, neither let us commit fornication. Some of them commit and fell in one day, uh, uh, three and 20,000. Can I say he's talking about committing spiritual fornication? Uh, serving other gods. Then it said in verse number 9, Neither let us tempt Christ. As some of them were tempted to destroy the serpents. When Numbers 11, when God sent the serpents to bite them and told Moses, Make a brazen serpent, put it on the pole. All that would look to it would live. Uh, I think I said 11. I think it's number 21. Anyway, can I say? They murmured. They tempted Christ. Verse 10, Neither murmur ye, as some of them were also murmured, were destroyed of the destroyer. Hmm? This is their pattern. He is warning us not to follow their patterns. Can I say some of the biggest complainers I've ever met in the world are church people? We've been bought with a price. Our sin debt is paid. We've been given eternal life. Uh, uh, we have the Holy Ghost living in us. we got the Holy Bible. God's been good to us. Uh, yet we'll complain worse than people that are on their way to hell. Mm -hmm. We're not to follow that pattern. We see the precedents, the forefathers. We see the pattern. But then notice the precaution in verse number 12. Wherefore let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. In, in our vernacular, we'd say somebody thinks they've, ar they've arrived. And it's a dangerous thing when you think you've arrived spiritually. When you think you've learned enough, when you think you've prayed enough, when you think you've went to church enough, when you think you know enough, when you think you're okay. That's a dangerous place to be in. Mm. We see the precaution. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed, lest he fall. It's a dangerous thing to make statements like, I will never. You might be headed for a fall. Hmm? Uh, you don't want to tempt the Lord God. 
Can I say this? You don't know your own heart. Amen. The heart's deceitful. It's wicked. No man knoweth it. You don't even know what you're capable of doing. Amen. So it's a dangerous thing to tell people what you will and won't do. We don't know what a day brings forth. Uh, I got to looking at that verse. Let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Got to thinking about that word thinketh. Yeah, you've heard me say many a time the battle's in our minds. The Bible says, so as a man thinketh, so is he. Hmm? You can convince yourself of anything in your mind. That don't make it so. And with all that in mind, I want to preach on this thought for just a few minutes. I want to preach on toxic thinking. You know what a toxin is, don't you? It's deadly. It's poisonous. And sometimes our thinking is poisonous. It's deadly. It'll cause you to fall. It'll cause you to turn your back on the things of God. It'll cause you to think you're much, much better than what you really are. I remind you, we were all made from dirt. Mm. Uh, nobody has arrived. Nobody in this building's got a halo. Nobody in here uh, has a glorified body. Nobody in here uh, 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 is able to handle anything uh, outside the grace of God. So toxic thinking can be very detrimental. Can I say this? We begin spiraling downward in our thinking when, first of all, we become confident in the flesh. I remind you the Apostle Paul said that in our flesh dwelleth no good thing. When you start getting confident in your flesh and in your abilities, you'll start operating without dependency on the Holy Ghost. And when you start operating without depending on the Holy Ghost, you're in trouble. Mm. Can I say we begin to spiral downward when our thinking uh, uh, causes us to become confident in the flesh, but also when we become conceited, prideful. Mm. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Mm. God resisteth the proud but give grace to the humble. And can I say that when we become prideful, conceited, thinking ourselves to be something when we are nothing, we're going to head down the wrong path. We begin to think with toxic thinking. We also head downward when we become condescending. Can I say that there is a cancer in many independent Baptist churches where people think they're better than somebody else. And see, when you become uh, uh, confident in the flesh and become conceited, uh, it's very easy to look down your nose at somebody else. Hmm? Uh, I remind you, the Bible says, uh, Who am I to judge another man's servant? There's one judge over all. His name's Jesus Christ. Be good for us to leave the judging up to him. Uh, can I be honest with you? I've said this many a times. I got a 24 hour day job taking care of this joker right here. Mm. Uh, I, I, I really, there, you know, people think that I may be standoffish or people may think that I'm not uh, as, as uh, uh, I guess, inviting as, as some people may be or some pastors may be. But the truth of the matter is, I, I try to get the mind of God to preach to you the word of God, but I got a 24-hour day job taking care of me. I can't come stay at your house and take care of you too. Huh? It's your job to get full of the Holy Ghost and get full of the Bible and take care of yourself. But if you're not careful, you'll become conceited and you'll become condescending. And you'll be real quick to offer up advice for other people that you won't even follow yourself. Can I say that our thinking becomes toxic, first of all, when we, we begin to question God's doctrine? When we begin to question the Word of God? Can I say I've never seen anybody leave church that they didn't start first questioning God's Word? 
Now they might not openly come and say, I don't believe that when you say that from the Bible. But in their heart they start questioning what God said and next thing you know they're out of here. I'm thinking of people right now that came to me uh, concerned about doctrine and I began to show them what the Bible says but yet they would not believe it in their heart and they're not in church tonight. Our thinking becomes toxic when we begin to question God's doctrine, when we begin to question His Word, when we begin to doubt what God said. I was in my Sunday school class, I said this this morning, and I've said it many times, this right here is the absolute and final authority of our lives. We need to certainly uh, uh, read it, we need to study it, we need to rightly divide it, uh, but we need to believe what God said. Uh, Can I say this? There's a lot of things in the Bible I don't understand, but I believe it all. Mm? Matter of fact, in 50 years of studying it, the more I read it, the more I study it, the more I realize I don't know. Mm? Because we have these uh, finite minds and God is infinite. And I've learned this, the more we grow in Christ, the more that we uh, uh, mature in the Lord, the closer we get to God, the more He unfolds from the Word of God to show us that without Him we are nothing. Mm. But when we begin to question God's Word, we have toxic thinking. Mm. I don't know why God did what God did. That's none of my business. He's God. And there are certain things in the Bible that He put in there that if I wrote the Bible, they wouldn't be in there. Uh, certainly that uh, passage we read this morning, I'd probably left that out. Hmm? But yet God gave us the Word of God for our examples and for our examples. And He gave us in the New Testament everything we needed in order to conduct our lives so we could be like Christ, so that we could be a witness, so we could be light and salt to this world, uh, so this world would come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But we become toxic in our thinking when we begin to question His Word, His doctrine. We become toxic in our thinking when we begin to question God's direction, His will. I don't know what God, why God does what He does and how He does it, the way He does it. That's not my business. We're just to follow. Only God could get a fellow that looks like Robert E. Lee, who's pastoring a good church and touch his heart and tell him to move to Kentucky, comes and buys a house without his wife even seeing it, and she comes and she's tickled with it. You know God had to be in that. Uh, I can't even buy a throw rug without Miss Annette's approval. Are you listening? He bought a whole house. She didn't even see it. He'd looked at house and house and house, and correct me if I'm wrong, preacher, you told me you'd just know when you walked in. And he walked into that one. That was the last one he's going to get to look at on that trip. He walked in and said, this is it. Had no idea uh, 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 what God was doing, nor did he have any idea the very property that he lives on today uh, is the very site that this church began uh, back in 1969. Uh, Only God knows how to do all that stuff. Uh, Hey, only God can touch the heart uh, of the pastor up the vineyard to come and meet with me and say, do you need any property when we've been praying about property. Uh, Only God can do things like that. Uh, Hey, uh, God's the one that's in control of it all. He knows how to direct our paths. Uh, Hey, He knows how to order our steps. Uh, Hey, it is our business to follow God's will, not to question it. But yet many people do. Hallelujah. I don't know why God would cause me to throw the mic in the floor, but that's what happened. Brother Randy and I talked the other day. We need a new mic, so we might as well tear this one up real good, huh? Uh, But who are we to question God's direction and His will, huh? That old lamb rider wrote, I will follow, I will follow thee. But yet, we'll follow Him as long as it's convenient to our thinking. Hmm? Brother Clint, a lot of people will not submit to follow God's direction because they're afraid he might drop them off in Africa somewhere. Neighbor, he might not want you to go to Africa. He just might want you to go across the street. Mm -mm. God help us to not question his direction. 
Because when we do, we have toxic thinking. Because you can talk yourself out of anything. Mm -mm. Can I say that our thinking becomes toxic when we question God's decisions, His ways? Now, I don't know why God chooses the ways that He does. But He told us to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. And on Monday nights at 6 o'clock, we get together and we load up a couple buses and we go out and we pass out materials. Uh, 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 we hang things on people's doors. We try to get the gospel to, to as many houses in our community every year. Uh, and we just go and do that. Uh, and it amazes me. It shouldn't amaze me, but it amazes me just about every week. Uh, we got first-time visitors. I mean, we had a house full this morning. Uh, uh, and it amazes me that a lot of times it's not even people that we knocked on their door or left a track on their door uh, but God knows how to direct people's uh, hearts to our way when we're faithful to do his ways uh, he's faithful to fulfill his ways uh, he can do things that we'll never be able to understand now, we're not to question his ways God's chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that will believe it amazes me in a lot of churches in this area, they're doing away with the pulpits and doing away with preaching because they're questioning God's ways. Hmm? If preaching don't get it done, it's not going to get done. Hmm? Can I say that, and I heard Brother Stroud say this on Monday night when he was watching the broadcast uh, uh, from camp down there, and, and I've been saying it for years, and a lot of preachers I've heard said it for years. Listen, teaching seeks to impart information. Preaching requires a decision. A lot of people sit under teaching. Oh, they like having little Bible studies. A lot of people want information. We live in the information age. But isn't it amazing they don't want preaching? Gets too close to their heartstrings. And we become toxic when we begin to question God's direction and when we can... And when we question his decisions, we question his doctrine, his word, his will, and his ways. Hmm? Let me just ask you this. When's the last time you flung a galaxy out there on nothing? When's the last time you painted a pretty sunset? When's the last time you caused the grass to grow? When's the last time you added an inch to your stature? Hmm, that's what I thought. But God does it every day. He causes the sun to set and to, and to, and to, he, he, he causes the sun to rise. He's the one that threw the stars out there and called them all by name and he keeps them all right where they're supposed to be and he's the one that has uh, 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 galaxies beyond galaxies. Uh, he's the one that uh, uh, causes the grass to grow and causes the grasshopper to have something to eat and causes uh, 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 the milk cow to have something to eat so you can have milk, have a beef cow, have something to eat so you can have a steak. I mean, God does all that. If he feeds the birds every day, he can take care of you and I. Who are we to question God? Matter of fact, read about the last three chapters of Job. You'll find God's answer to Job, and you'll find Job finally repents and gets right with God, and then God blesses him with double than what he had in the beginning. Can I say our thinking becomes toxic when we question God's decisions, his ways. But it also becomes toxic when we question God's design. Miss Nett saw something online the other night. I said, oh, I like that. She went on the website, and the website said gender, and then in parentheses it said, and there's only two. I said, we need to order from that website. How come for the first uh, 6,000 years of men, there's never been a question that, you know, there's only two genders? But in the last five years, we got a lady sitting on the Supreme Court of the United States of America that couldn't tell you what a woman is? Hmm. Supposed to be smart. That's, that's the dumbest person I've seen in a long time. Much learning has caused her to become mad. Huh? Can I say that the Bible says that there would come a day when men would lust after men and women after women. They'd burn in their hearts for lust for one another. And 
they would seek to do those things which are not convenient and God turned them over to a reprobate mind to allow them to do it. Uh, those days are upon us, friend. And can I say, if you listen to enough of their philosophy and ideology, you'll start questioning God's design. Amen. Hmm? Say, preacher, I don't believe it. I've been pastoring almost 30 years. Been pastoring in this church 25 years. And I say back when I was just an associate pastor before I started pastoring, so we're going back 30 years or more. I was teaching a Sunday school class in an independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, spit right, walk right, keep it tight Baptist church. And it was young people in their 20s. And can I say that there was a young lady in that class that had went to that church's Christian school, had been in that church all her life, and we began to teach, and we began to teach, and, and in, the, in the teaching, a uh, 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 question came up about homosexuals. And can I say that that young lady sat there and told me that the Bible was wrong because she had a friend that was born that way. And this friend had to be born that way because he was raised in a seven-day Adventist church where they were very strict. Well, first of all, he's raised in a cult. And second of all, I don't care what he says, he wasn't born that way. When you start questioning God's design, you have toxic thinking. Say, what happened? Wasn't long she's out of church. Mm -mm. God's the one that put all this thing in order. But the Bible does say in the Psalms about the earth being out of course. And this earth is out of course. Amen. We got crazy people running the asylum. You know what I'm saying? Uh, can I say that uh, I saw the other day where back in 1976 they broadcasted that the uh, climate change would cause this world to, to end by 2025. Well, the world's temperature hadn't changed a bit, Brother Tommy. Hmm? Smart people believe stupid things when you begin to question God's design. Hmm? Uh, uh, I remember when they started Earth Day. I thought that was the dumbest thing. And we're still having it. Earth Day. Can I say... Ever since the Tower of Babel, man has worshipped the earth. Man has worshipped the sun. Man has worshipped natural things and has not worshipped Almighty God. They have toxic thinking. But can I say, the more their toxic thinking is pumped into society, the more it becomes accepted as norm. And if you're not careful, you'll start accepting it. Hmm. got one more thought your thinking becomes toxic when we begin to question God's duties his work how come we have no problem thinking the preacher has to do all this stuff the preacher has to show up church every time the doors are open the preacher has to uh, make certain everything's clean. The preacher has to make sure everything runs smoothly. The preacher has to do this. The preacher has to do that. Preacher, mm, but we don't think that everybody else has to. Amen. Show me chapter and verse for that. I can show you chapter and verse where we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Right. I can show you that uh, 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 in the in the Word of God that we're to all we're to go ye all. We're to all go into the world and preach the gospel. We're to all be faithful. We're to all be good stewards of the things of God. We're to all, but yet, we have no problem thinking the preacher has to do it. The preacher's wife and his family has to do it. But how come it, it doesn't apply to everybody else? So well, I've never been called to preach. Have you been saved? You know, why don't we just start tearing pages out of the Bible that we don't think applies to us? Huh? Y'all know Brother Mike Goodson? He's preaching a revival years ago. He's preaching and nothing happening. 
And him and the pastor both was boggled. I mean, nobody come to the altar, nobody moving, nobody saying amen, nothing. And it's about midweek, and Brother Mike's supposed to be there until Wednesday. Brother Mike tells the preacher, you know, it's Wednesday. He's supposed to be there Friday. It's Wednesday, and he tells the preacher, he said, something doesn't happen tonight, I'm going to the house. And he got to think, he said, preacher, you got an old songbook, just an old nasty, ragged-up songbook? The preacher said, yeah. He said, let me have it. So Brother Mike got up, and he just quoted a verse, and he's got this songbook, but they thought it was the Bible. He quoted a verse. He said, well, I don't like that verse. I'm going to just tear it out. And he tore, tore that page out of that songbook, wrapped it up through it on, the, on the pulpit. And then he quoted another verse. I don't like that one either. And he pulled that one out. And threw, he did that about three or four times, and people started getting mad and started jumping. Hey, that's the Bible. You don't teach that, but treat the Bible that way. And people started getting real. He just kept doing it. People kept getting mad and about ready to whip him. He said, I know that's, that's the Bible. Now, this old dilapidated songbook, but this is what the Bible really said. And he just started preaching the Bible, and revival broke out. Well, see, we tear pages out without literally tearing them out because we begin to question what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to live. That's okay for other people to live that way, but that just don't apply to me. You see, when we question God, we take him off of the throne of our life and we become God. That's toxic thinking. Uh, now listen, toxic thinking will lead to three things. Number one, it'll lead to hatred. You know why our country's in a mess? It's full of hatred. Hmm? Full of hate. Can I say that our country's been divided since 2008? Full of hate, full of venom. You know what amazes me? Now, like him, love him, hate him, I really don't care. But what amazes me about Trump, they all loved him until he became president. They all loved him when they needed donations. They all loved him when he went on his TV show. They all loved him for when he built uh, New York City skyline. They all loved everything about him until he got sick of the mess and decided to run for president. Then they thought it was a joke. But that night when he came down the escalator, when he won, when Hillary got drunk because she thought she already had it in the bag, uh, hey, they all turned on him. Why? Because he began to reveal them. But we got a country full of hatred. We got folks that hate the church and hate the Bible. There are so many people out there that think that we are so, so, so hypocritical. It amazes me how many people out there want to tell us what the Bible said and they've never opened one. It amazes me how many people out there want to tell everybody what we believe, but they've never come and sat in a service. Hmm? When we have toxic thinking, it develops hatred. And you know what comes with hatred? Bitterness. There's so many people out there that are so bitter. And yet Jesus said, the world will know you're my disciples because you have love one for another. Hmm? There's no place anywhere in the work of God for bitterness and hatred. Matter of fact, that's the opposite of what we're supposed to be. That's some of the tares the enemy wants to sow in. Hatred and bitterness. But it amazes me how, how many people that believe all this junk, how they're full of hate. Hey, you don't want to believe in God. You don't want to believe in the Bible. You don't want to believe in freedom. You don't want to believe in America. That's your choice. But why do you have to act out and be hateful to other people? Why do you got to burn down stores? What did that store ever do to you? Why do you got to cause such a mess in cities? Hmm? Because their thinking is toxic. When Christians become toxic in their thinking, they'll hate the things of God. I was telling Brother Ron for service. I've known people that have sat under a pastor and sat in a church and been faithful for years but then see something on the internet cause them to question and next thing you know they turn their back on the preacher on the church and everything else 
because of some joker they don't even know. I'm talking about somebody we had in the church years ago read something on the internet that if, if uh, uh, your singing in the church wasn't all hymns, then your church isn't scriptural. But yet the Bible says, speaking on yourselves and spiritual songs and hymn and psalms. When I tried to share that with this individual and tried to show them what the Bible said, because they read it on the Internet, our church wasn't spiritual. And I tried to be compassionate, Brother Brian, as much as I could be compassionate. But finally the redneck come out in me. I said, I tell you what, next time you're in the hospital, have that joker from the Internet come and visit you. How many camp meetings is that joker on the Internet going to take you with him? How many times is that joker on the Internet going to be there for you? Huh? Just call him next time. Huh? But that's what toxic thinking will do. It'll cause you to hate your brother. Can I say that it also leads to hardness. You become hard in your heart. Can I say, you look around this world, you'll get hard-hearted quick. But you look in the pages of this word, word and you get tender-hearted. Mm. God help us to stay tender, compassionate. Toxic thinking will also leave you to halting. You'll quit walking with the Lord. You'll quit church. You'll quit reading your Bible. You'll quit everything that will sustain you and help you through this old wicked world because of toxic thinking. The great apostle said this, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. The next time some kind of toxic thought comes in our mind, we need to ask the Lord to eradicate it because I don't want to head for a fall. Listen, that path that we have been blessed to walk on is called straight, and it's narrow. There's two ditches on either side. You lean a little right or a little left, you'll end up in a ditch. Only by the grace of God can you stay on this path called straight. And you can only stay on it by looking up and keeping your eyes on Jesus. My dear friends, God help us not to get caught up in toxic thinking because if we do we'll end up in a mess and there's enough messes in this world already we don't need to end up there all right i'm done brother clint come get a song of invitation maybe you need to come and ask the lord to help you not to become toxic in your thinking maybe you need to come pray for somebody somebody that maybe used to be in church and isn't in church anymore maybe you need to come and just tell the Lord you love him I don't know but let's all stand there picking out a song some are already coming you just mind the Lord tonight there's a lot of folks out there that need some help and why don't you come ask the Lord to just give you an extra helping of love so they, you can share love and compassion on this old wicked world alright they're picking out a song let's pray Father we bless you we love you Lord, we live in this world. We're not of this world, but we live in this world, and we're all subject to listening to this junk in this world, and it can affect us. So, Father, help us insulate our minds and our hearts that our thinking wouldn't be toxic, but our thinking would be scriptural and spiritual. And, Lord, we wouldn't think ourselves to be something when we're nothing. And, God, we'd truly be compassionate toward others. And, Lord, we'd be... Uh, a help to others and Lord we'd show others the right way and his name is Jesus bless these in the altar bless now in this invitation speak to hearts glorify your namesake we'll bless you for it in Jesus name amen do you struggle to find good bible based resources to supplement your personal devotions if so head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on bookstore where we have a ton of resources and as always thanks for listening